Welcome to Dent Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Sony XBA3 series. And this is one step down from the top of the line XBA4 series. Um, it's significantly cheaper though. The XBA4 I believe retails for around 4 to 450. These retail for around 300. Um, I picked these up for 210 or 220 on Amazon. Um, for some reason the iPod compatible model with the remote control and microphone was discounted so I grabbed that one. But just to go over what's included. You have the leather case with a magnetic latch. Um, unfortunately, this does not have the plastic insert that a lot of the older Sony's had. Um, where you would put the headphones into the molded grooves of the shape of the head uh, pieces, and then you'd wrap the cable around and then slide in the case. The last pair of Sony's I had with that, um, I still have them, and they're over four years old, three, four years old. Um, so that case system seemed to work really well at preventing anything from damaging the cable. Um, you have a series of tips here, pretty good assortment. Um, they're both standard silicon and silicone with foam lining for added isolation. They're just kind of your standard well-made tips. Um, there's a clip here which I'm not really fond of. Um, it's kind of funky just the way it works. You open it up and it opens up as one piece. Kind of looks like a roach cockroach or something. Basically you would slide the cable into the groove there and then it comes into the groove up and around the little notches there and back out but you have to make sure the cable coming out of each side is flat which is kind of strange because it goes in flat and then twists around and then flattens out again and then you shut it and clip it onto what you want to clip it onto and then you shut the cable into it the problem with that is if you don't have that cable perfectly flat that way and you shut this, you will crimp your cable and you could damage your cable. It, even sh it shows you a picture of it in the manual and warns you about it. So I'm not really fond of that. It just seems kind of finicky and, and odd. Um, then you have a little cable tidy upper here. You can put the cable through the, the grooves on the end, wrap it around, you know, shorten the cable up a little bit. So those are the main accessories. Um, you also have the iPod control on this model. This feels pretty good. I mean, it's not fantastic, super duper durable, but it's nothing bad about it. It's kind of just standard plastic. You press the volume up and down to control the volume. The center button um, pauses. A double click and hold will fast forward. Um, and then a single click hold will bring up the voice control. I find the iPod control pretty useful. Um, it's nice to have that voice control. I'm not sure how, how much you'd be able to use it in public with ambient noise and you know probably being embarrassed talking to yourself. Uh, maybe not, who knows, but uh, it, it works pretty well. You can just hit it and say, play Alan Parsons' The Raven, and bloop, there you go, Alan Parsons' The Raven, please. Um, so it's a very nice feature to have. Um, whether or not it's going to you know, reduce the durability, I don't know. I think if you take care of it, it's probably going to be okay. It is what it is, I guess. Um, the basic design of this earpiece is pretty simple. Um, it's kind of a, a basic round shape kind of bulky but it's very light and then it's got a slight angle with that tip so you would put it in your ear like that and um, there's some very nice stress relief on the bottom of the cable end here where it goes into the chamber it's very nice it's very you know just big flexible piece of rubber and then the cable is a uh, flat cable it's got a little bit of roundness to it but it's basically a flat cable I find that they do pretty well at not getting tangled. They're not perfect. Um, one thing I like about this design, though, is really nice, is they have a dot on that earpiece, on that little flexible part, so you can rub it and feel which side's the left side without looking at it. Um, it's also pretty clearly marked with a um, a red R and a um, white L. So it's pretty easy to distinguish side from side. You know, just look at the color real quick. And it also has a red ring under the right as well. So it's, it's pretty well distinguished, so that's nice. It fits pretty nice. It's kind of a standard fit. You just jam it in and there you go. There's nothing special about it. There's no tri-flange or anything like that. Pretty simple. It seals pretty well. Um, they don't feel like they go as deep as most headphones in my ear without me actually lifting up on my earlobe and trying to put them in like I would a, a pair of earplugs. But um, they work pretty well once you get them in. Sound quality of these is interesting. Um, first, I'm going to say that with an iPod, like the iPod Touch, they have uh, a very good sound quality. It's not the best I've ever heard. Um, they have a good amount of bass, definitely have a good amount of sub-bass and low-bass, um, but it's still fairly neutral overall. 
The clarity is superb. There's a lot of detail. It draws out excellent depth in 3D. Very wide stereo separation. Um, very good overall sound quality. It lacks a little bit of the mid-range. But the biggest problem that I note with these is that they have a metallic characteristic in the treble. Um, so when you're listening to certain songs, it really can almost get fatiguing and can sometimes be irritating. It's not too bad on the iPod, uh, but that leads me to the, the interesting part of the sound quality. These headphones um, are very strongly affected by impedance. So basically, if you put these on an iPod, which I believe the iPod Touch is between 5 and 7 ohms on that, on that headphone output, these are 16 ohm headphones. Now, it's, I think it's recommended that the um, output of your device be about an eighth the homage, the impedance of the headphone, um, or less to get the best result. Well, if you put these on the iPod, um, it equates to close to an eighth, so you get pretty good sound quality. But immediately switching to um, something such as an iPod Classic, which is actually, I don't know the definite technical specs for this, but I'm guessing it's around 10 to 12 ohms because you notice a significant boost in some of the treble frequencies. And it doesn't sound that bad. It adds a little bit of clarity, but it makes the overall song sound thinner on the iPod Classic. Um, but then if you take a next step up to something such as an Apogee Duet, the sound interface for your computer, or you know uh, any sound interface that has a higher impedance, um, with a 32 ohm output of the Duet, these things sound horrible. It literally takes the flat response, the iPod Classic bumps it up in the treble, and then the Duet bumps it up even further, um, somewhere between the 6 and 12 kilohertz range. And what happens is you get a completely thin, metallic-y, um, almost rough-sounding tone with a lack of bass, and it just sounds really not nice at all, honestly. So if you're going to stick with the XBAs, I would I would use them with an iPod. Um, I wouldn't use them with a higher impedance output. However, that might vary on, de on device, I'm not sure, but from the research I've done and the graphs that I've seen, it shows that the treble scales upwards with um, higher impedance outputs. So I would say these are definitely geared towards portable audio players, despite their hefty price tag, um, and they're not really suited for high-quality studio interfaces and things like that but overall the sound quality is fairly smooth a little bit lacking in the mids um, a little bright and a little metallic sounding but overall a decent amount of bass a very good clarity and separation again um, so I'd say for the price I wouldn't say these are a good value personally I think the case is decent the tips are decent the other accessories and whatever um, the style of the headphone, I, I actually like it. I think Sony did a nice job with the simplicity, but it kind of looks classy and shiny and has a nice relief and the nice cable and everything. Um, but I just don't think they're the same value as some of the other headphones that I've tried out. For the 280 that they retail, especially not, but for the 210 or 220 that I paid, I think they're kind of above the, the value price that they should be at. Um, so if you have a chance to try them out, I would definitely test them on the source that you're going to be using them on first to make sure you're not going to experience any of that, that bad treble spiking. Um, if you do plan on only using it on an iPod or an MP3 player that has a low impedance output, then you may be fine and you may actually like these because they do provide a good healthy amount of bass compared to most, most dual balanced armatures. This is actually a, a triple um, balanced armature, so that's a separate one for the subwoofer as well, which is why these get a good bass response. They're not bass head headphones, they're not super bassy, but they give a good healthy amount of bass. They don't lack and they don't feel like you're missing bass like you do with some of the other sets like the BA200 and the PFE112. They're not bad, but they, they kind of lack that low bass. These don't. These are pretty good. Um, so that's definitely their plus. The negative would be the treble. So that concludes the review of the XBA3. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the bottom here, and I'll try to get back to you, and thank you so much for watching.